Hi, I decided to split this story up into two videos. So this is part two. I'm gonna go ahead and tell you who I am again. Um, this is Brianna, entrepreneur with no job, but I do have a dream and this is my journey. So I'm telling this story about when I worked at Banker's Life and Casualty because it impacts where I am now mentally that I've expressed in the last two videos and I wanna answer questions for people looking for this information. So I, um, you know, kept along my journey. I think it's about June. The manager pulls me in her office and she said, okay, you need to learn to be fake. And I got triggered because it took me back to college where I felt like my personality was not good enough. And I felt that people didn't like me because I wasn't as good as them and I had a terrible personality. Since college, I had worked on being comfortable with who I was and um, just like, embracing who I am. So for somebody to tell me to be fake, just like made me really upset and I actually started crying. And it wasn't that she was being mean, it was just a trigger. So I actually ended up going to counseling from there, which I would then go on to do for another couple years. And I think that was really good for me. And if that's all that came from that experience, then that's fine. Um, but she told me to be fake and I obviously was not gonna be able to be fake. So then at the beginning of July, one of my honeymoon, I was starting to think about quitting at this point, but I was like, I didn't want to give up because I really thought that it was a good opportunity. The things I liked about it were that there was high earning potential, lots of bonuses, and the opportunity to be autonomous over my schedule. Went on my honeymoon, thought I would come back refreshed, still wanted to quit. Later that month, I got paired up with another person as a trainer. Well, she wasn't really a trainer at that point. She was just somebody else that I was going to go do calls with or make a go to appointments with. Um, we had to go to Wilmington for like a quarterly meeting. And my other trainer, the one I said wasn't very good, he was being praised for like high earning and blah, blah, blah. He was going to go on a cruise and had won all this stuff. And it kind of reminded me of that movie, The Witches from the 90s, maybe even the 80s, where everybody's there and then they like unzip their bodies and they're like witches and just kind of like that kind of kool-aid mentality so that i was like i don't see myself in these people this i don't think this environment's for me anyway the whole time we're there this woman we'll call her Teresa. she was like telling me so we're gonna make a lot of we're gonna get our our day books we're gonna go and we're gonna have a full day of appointments yeah uh, yeah we're gonna do it i mean you don't have a choice we're gonna so she's talking kind of sitting to me like I'm her child because she perceived my lack of success to be due to a uh, lack of effort mm. which is always so frustrating because I was really trying I think it was really obvious I was trying but she still thought that she could talk to me like that so that evening I called her and I told her you can go without me you don't have I mean you seem to not want to bother with me so you don't have to go with me and she's like oh goodness blah 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 anyway so then the next day we had to come in on Saturday and make calls I actually book my entire day which is really weird so she's very happy the following week we go out on our appointments this is in july and she's playing joel olstein she's like what do you think of that what do you think about that because again she perceives me as being incompetent as opposed to uh just struggling because i shouldn't be doing this um that was the most uncomfortable like two days it was terrible but what i think it was friday when we were doing, we're in office, the manager called me and her, well, actually she was looking at everybody's numbers and then she came to mind. She was like, you gotta, we gotta do something. And so she pulled me in her office and she, I think she was gonna tell me that I should quit. And I was like, yeah, I'm planning to quit. So that was my last day. Now, the other thing I want to say is in December, I got a letter saying that I owed like $750 and I had only made like a thousand dollars. So I'm panicking. And of course I text the manager, she didn't text me back. There was this one time I was supposed to go on appointments with her and she just didn't answer the phone or text me for like an hour, I'm waiting on her. And uh, then once she arrived, she didn't say anything about it. She was just like, oh, let's go. Um, but anyway, so I go online to see what this is about, find out that this is something that happens. So when you sell things on commission, especially insurance, the premiums are advanced. So people like you get an advanced percentage of what they'll pay for the year. 
And in my case, people had canceled or just stopped paying. So I had to give that money back. It was so upsetting. I went ahead and called the company and just settled and paid, I think like six fifty dollars or some, some lesser amount all at once. And I was done with it. And I do recommend doing that because you do owe that. Um, so what I learned is I worked hard and I outworked others, but I still failed. So that reinforced to me that hard work is not all it takes and that you can't do anything you set your mind to. But I guess I would push back and say, did I really set my mind to it if I was feeling like a failure so early on? Like, I guess I started to expect to fail and just continue to fail. Um, but now I know that that job was never meant for me for several reasons. I think I kind of touched on why it wasn't an ideal situation. Um, and I also know that I need to enjoy my work through and through. There can't just be one little thing like, oh, I like to meet the clients. That can't be the only thing I like about the job. So now I have a couple more stories that will even show you more why I should have just left. So it was like the first week I was there. The manager had asked me, we're sitting in the conference room, I think eating lunch. She was like, do you, sometimes we go to go walk after work. Um, yeah, all of us girls, we go to this park. And I was like, okay, cool. Again, I want to be included. I didn't want a repeat of what happened in college. So I said, yeah, I'll, I'll be interested in that. And once she left, I asked one of the other agents, oh, do you usually walk or run? She says she tries to run. I'm like, okay, cool. Then I can do that. Because normally I would go to the gym after work. And so I didn't really want to spend that time walking um, when I normally am doing something more, more higher, high intensity. So then later a bunch of people are in a suite. So I go in the suite and the manager is saying, oh, Brianna, I asked Brianna if she wanted to walk with us after work sometime. And she said, she doesn't walk, she runs. And everybody's laughing. I was like, well, no, I mean, I just normally go to CrossFit after work. So I wanted to do something else. Oh, you go to CrossFit. Oh, she thinks she's better than us. And they kept saying that and making fun of me. And then of course I'm trying to defend myself, which is just like causing them to make fun of me more. So I eventually was like, okay, I know you guys are joking, but I really don't want to be made fun of for that. And this is because when I was in college, a lot of like the trauma in my life came from college. I was a college athlete and I felt very left out. And um, I also had this experience of people saying that I think I'm better than them or I'm judging them, but I was actually pretty shy. And I, again, I felt like my personality was inferior to others. I thought other people were better than me in general. So it was really difficult to have people say, that I thought I was better than them because it was untrue and it was still causing me problem, like inhibiting me from connecting with others. So that triggered me just like that other situation. I said, I don't want to be made fun of for that, but they kept going. I said that at least three times. I was very upset. So I eventually just like, I kept it together. I just played it cool and I left and I actually left for the day because I was upset. And about 30 minutes later, the manager called and said, um, I just wanted to make sure you knew we're playing. You just need to toughen up. So it's one of those things where somebody thinks uh, thinks you're uptight and then they think that putting a lot of pressure on you is going to make that change somehow. Anyway, that's all she said. She didn't say mm, I, that was inappropriate. We shouldn't have, I shouldn't have allowed that to happen, blah, blah, blah. Um, so after that, I called my friend and I actually cried. I was so upset because I didn't expect that to happen in a workplace as an adult. I just didn't expect that scenario. Next, it was about 10 days later, so I'm like in my third week of employment, I experienced um, what I would call sexual harassment. So um, immediately, I told you that the manager had said that I was pretty, so you can assume um, I was better looking than the other people that worked there in the least. <laughs> Um, and I, one of the trainers, we'll call him Jeff, he, he would say like, he would just make comments about how attractive I was and, um, it was getting like, it was amping up. So this one day we were the only two people in the suite and he's like touch, rubbing my shoulder, sitting next to me, wanting to touch my hand, talking about how pretty I am. Oh, you can be a model. Just like being too much and it's really amping up. And then there's this other older gentleman in the office who... I really think he didn't mean well. You know how sometimes older men are flirty, but they know they can't have you. Um, anyway, and he's hugging me. And I feel like in the South, I guess it's a, a Southern thing maybe that people want to hug at work all the time. But he was hugging me and I was just really put off. So 
the next week Janet had asked what was wrong and I said I feel like I've been sexually harassed and I don't want to work here she told me that she was aware and she would talk to the manager the manager never said anything to me about it but one day in passing she did say tell Jeff not to touch you and that's it I guess she talked to him because it didn't happen again. Um, but I did talk to my friend about it. And my friend, he's like 10 years older than me back in St. Louis. And he said that that's something called priming where somebody keeps pushing the someone's boundaries so that at some point they don't know if they don't know where the boundaries are. And then I find myself with someone kissing my neck in a stairwell. And I'm like, did I ask for this? So I learned that. Anyway, I should have quit at that time and I did not. And now I know how to be use my what my body's telling me to make decisions. Intuition is a powerful tool. So that's all I want to say about Bankers Life and Casualty. I do want to say the products are legitimate. Um, so if you're considering buying it, go ahead and do that. Uh, make sure it's right for you. And you should be able to trust your agent. So if you feel your agent doesn't have a good character, then maybe move on. But there should be... I mean, like you're supposed to, that is, insurance is regulated. So hopefully you can trust somebody around there. I did want to add that in terms of working there, it's not a scam, except that I think I heard 78% of new agents will quit within the first year. So when an agent quits, their clients are still paying premiums and the company still gets that money, but they don't have to pay an agent a commission. So I think that may disincentivize the company from actually making sure agents are competent before they go out into the field. That's just my two cents. Okay, thank you so much for listening to my story. I hope you guys have a good day and um, I hope you have life insurance.